end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. If you watch my N1MM quick install guide, this is the follow-up to it. Here, we're going to show you how to interface your radio and install WSJTX as a digital system through N1MM. So, check it out. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. And what we're looking at here is exactly how I left things when we did the quick install of N1MM for field day. Um, if you didn't watch that video, I strongly recommend you watch it because it takes you to the point that we're at here with N1MM installed and configured for field day. Now, what we're going to have to do to get WSJTX configured and working with N1MM uh, is about a four or five, six step process. Um, the first step is to get the radio's cat control properly working with N1MM. That means you got to figure out what COM port you're on, what your baud rate is, what your parity is, and your data and your stop bits. Okay, um, if you've never set up uh, cat controls for your radio, you're going to have to read a little bit in your manual. Let me help you with the things that people have a lot of trouble with, uh, even that know how to set up a radio with their computer, and I'll show you just a couple quick things. Um, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to right-hand mouse click on the Start menu, and then I'm going to left-click on Device Manager. Now, I'm not running as the administrative account, so I am actually going to turn around and click uh, the Device Manager. Now, from there... I am going to go ahead and I am going to pull down where it says ports. Now, in this particular case, I've got three ports here. And I happen to know that the one I'm looking for is COM5, okay? Um, you're going to have to understand how your radio COM ports work. You know, if you're going into a serial interface on the back and you have a USB to serial adapter that you're plugging into your computer, chances are it's going to be one of these USB serial port types. And you'll probably only see one there. If you're hooking into something that has built-in communication, ports and sound cards and everything else like this uh, DX uh, or excuse me FT DX 3000 then there's going to be a few more COM ports there but in my particular case I've done this enough times and I've played around and kind of by trial and error and reading the manual I figured out that it's COM5 for this computer and this radio all right with that I'm going to go to config I'm going to go to config ports mode control, win key, and Etsy, or etc. And I am going to go over to this, and I'm going to tell it to go to COM5, right there where it says port. Now it's asking me what kind of radio I have. Well, that one's fairly easy. I happen to know I have an FTDX3000, so I'm going to select that. I need now to go to set. Under set, I have to set my speed, which is my baud rate, my parity, my data bits, and my stop bits. Now, in my particular case, my Yesu will default to 4800 none 8 and 1 stop bit, not 2. But if everything was configured to the factory defaults, I could probably just take this, click OK, and I'd be set to go. However... I've made changes on my radio. I've actually changed the baud rate. So I need to change my baud rate up to 38400. And the end, the 8, and the 1 stop bit is going to be correct for me. And that about takes care of it. So let's go ahead now. We'll click OK and we'll see if that actually worked. Well, look at that. This went from 14200 to 14250. I'm going to spin the dial to 14260. Uh, there we go. God, I went past it. 
there I am on 14260 and it matches up there. <clears throat> so that's working just fine. I should be able to type in uh, 14 250 here and hit enter and there it changed there it also changed on my radio how do you know it changed on my radio because i'm telling you so you can't see my radio but that's all right okay so we know that that works so what's next well what i need to do now is i need to go back into configure and tell it where my wsjtx install is so i'm going to go back to configure uh, configure ports, mode control, win key, etc. And I'm going to go all the way to the end here to WSJT JTDX setup. I have to click this to turn this on right here for radio one. And this is actually a UDP port that needs to communicate directly with the WX uh, or the WSJT software. So I need to make sure that's on. Down here, all I have to do is I have to go select, and I've got to find the executable for WSJTX. Now, when I originally installed it, I installed it in the default, which is the root of the C directory. And I just go in WSJ and WSJX, go to bin, scroll down, and I find the WSJTX executable. I select that and click OK, and there it is in the path, right there. All right. I'm not going to have any command line perimeters or anything else. I'm just going to set it up that way. With all that there, I'm going to click OK. Now, a couple things. In earlier videos, I showed you how to install WSJTX. And if you are watching this and you haven't installed WSJTX before, um, you know, go watch that other video. I'm betting that if you're looking at using FT8 for field day, you've used FT8 before. It's already on your computer. Okay. A couple things you need to know. When it launches from this program, it's going to create a completely different configuration directory. All of your current configuration is safe, but it won't be accessing it while you're running it from N1MM. So you're going to have to configure everything again. Now I'm going to show you how I configure mine, and you've probably been in and out of it enough that you know, you know how you want it set. But there are some particular things you need to be really careful with when you set this up, and we're going to go over those, okay? So first things first, I'm going to go to Window, and all the way down at the bottom it's asking, if I click this, it's going to load WSJT JTDX. Now, a couple things have happened here, okay? Uh, this little window here, I just clicked the box so I don't have to look at it anymore. But, like I said, a couple of things have happened here. I have this new box that pops up that I've never seen before. This is part of N1MM, and this needs to stay open. I'm just going to drag it down here. I also have no settings in here, although I can't tell that. And, of course, my waterfall is going awfully slow. So I'm probably going to need to adjust that a little bit. Let's see here. Uh, let's make it fit right. All right. And, you know what, I'm going to make it a little wider. I usually do this on a dual-head machine, so I've got a little bit more real estate. But that's all right. All right. So... There we go. I got that. So let's go here to File, Settings, and let's go ahead and set our stuff up. So I'm going to put in my call. I'm going to put in the grid. Now, I want to, I want to put a blank line between decodes. I want to display distance in miles. Uh, TX messages to RX frequency window, that's fine. Uh, show DX, uh, I don't need to do this, actually. I would if I was going to be running just uh, WSJT65, but for the contest, I don't care about any of that. I want uh, to double-click to set transmit. Uh, I'll disable TX after sending 73. 
Let's see. Uh, calling CQ forces first. Uh, I can. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Alternate. Uh, let's see. She died. I don't need that. Don't need microwave features. That looks pretty good. All right. Now, for my radio, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> I am going to go down here to. I got to find it. DX Lab Suite Commander. DX Lab Suite Commander is not installed on this computer. And if I did have it installed, I'd have to make sure that I didn't run it because it's using the setting to lie to the two programs so they can communicate in that language. All right. The only other thing I change is I change this to cat. That's it. I don't want to touch anything else. If I want, I can go ahead and hit the test cat and we can wait a second. And what should happen is I should get, there we go, green light. That means we're set to go. Now I have to set my audio. And of course, in my case, my audio is uh, the USB microphone and the USB speaker. There we go. Now, uh, I don't need to worry about macros. I'm not going to change anything. Uh, reporting. I need to click on accept UDP requests. Oh, and I need it to prompt me to log the QSO. And let's see. The rest of that I can pretty much leave alone. All right. Now, I don't need to worry about frequencies or colors, even though I would normally change that. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to go to advanced, and I'm going to say special operation. And this is going to be ARL field day. And my exchange, right, is 1 E S B. All right. So now with that, I need to do a couple small changes here. Uh, first off, I need to change my configuration on my radio so I'm set for digital. There I go. And I'm on the right one there. And I want to do, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I need to go over here. And what I want to do is I want to change my mode to FT8. Now look what pops up because I'm in a contest. I get this cool little contest log. So I can set this up just like this, like so. What else, though? Well, look at who's decoding now. Check that out. There we go. Looks like 20 is open. All right. Now, what I'm also going to want to do is I'm going to want to go over here to Window, and I'm going to want to open up WSJ T decode list, and it's going to pop up a decode list right here. And let me scroll, move it down a little bit. So when this thing pops up, it's going to list everything, but it's going to color code the CQs that I haven't talked to. So I know that these are new CQs for me to answer if I want to, and those qualify for points, right? They show up over here the same way. Here's some more right there. All these are available points, okay? All the ones that are marked in green are calling CQ, and they're available points to me. When I click to answer them, it's going to go through the normal process just like it normally would. And then it's going to pop up and prompt me to save it to the log. When I click to save it to the log, guess what? It's going to go directly, directly into N1MM. All right? Guys, that's it. It really is that easy. We're set to rock and roll. Now, we got to make a lot of setting changes and stuff to make this feel the way that you like it to feel. I certainly don't like my waterfall to be like this. But we have something that's functional. All right? Oh, I almost forgot. Let me show you how to get out of all this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to close WSJT and I am going to close the decode window. Boom. You see how that little pop-up went away? Just that easy. Oh, one more thing. 
bonus. Let's go to window and let's pull up multipliers and let's go ahead and we'll pull up uh, section state multipliers. And I'll adjust this little darling out a little ways. And I'm going to use a little arrow here to make it smaller. There we go. I like it about that size. I can put it down here if I want or wherever I want. And what this is going to do is this is going to show all of the multipliers, right? And that sure didn't stack the way I wanted it. Anyway, but just adjust it out the way that you want it and that you can see it best. And this will show you all the possible multipliers. Such as, of course, Area 6, Santa Barbara, right? So when you get one, it's going to mark it right here. And I can clean this up a little bit. I can change the way it displays. I can set bands and modes um, and change that to what I want it to display in here to make it a little bit easier to view. Um, anyway, with that, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. And hope to hear you out there for field day. 73 from AG6AG. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure it left you with a few questions. Leave them down in the comments down below. That would be really helpful. And please subscribe so you're notified on new videos. Thanks again. This is Stu, AG6AG. Hope to catch you on the air.